is six minutes away from eight. The Radio Wemo Breakfast. Daniel Nielsen. Daniel Nielsen, indeed, joining us from Copenhagen for the uh, letter from Copenhagen. Hello to you, Daniel. Good morning, Wemo. And and we've just been talking off air about his brand new job that he's just um, got underway yeah. last week. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit about it? Uh, sure. Um, I'm the uh, I've become the editor of National Geographic Online for Scandinavia. So I'm the I'm uh, looking after the um, the websites with National Geographic content for Denmark, Sweden, Norway, and Finland, which is quite a challenge. <laughs> Not only working in Danish, but also trying to sort of manage stuff that's in other languages that I don't even understand. <laughs> and and from what you were just telling me, it's quite it sounds like quite an old school kind of workplace. Yeah, it's an old uh, publishing house called, um, it's now called Bonnier Publications, which is quite a big, really big Swedish company that also has a base in the States and, and different places. Uh, there's something like 300 employees. And uh, I think the Danish uh, company's been there for since uh, the mid-60s or something. So it's stuff, you know, we have like, we have a canteen and things like that and uh, various uh, staff goods that are quite nice. <laughs> Excellent, excellent. Sounds great. Well, and I, I don't mean to talk about the weather, but um, the weather is quite a big story over there at the moment, isn't it? Oh, the weather's always a big story, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we've had we've had the uh, January. It's been the coldest month in the last thirty years in Denmark. It's basically been snowing since Christmas. Imagine, <laughs> imagine that in New Zealand. I remember uh, Canterbury University having to shut down because there was a centimetre of snow outside and. People were scared that branches might snap off when you walk to university. <laughs> I mean, things just going to shut down. Yeah. <clears throat> but um, and, and they're used to having snow here, but it's not. It's not. It's not like it snows every year, and certainly not for an entire month. I mean, you know, you have a white Christmas at every ten years, so it's quite unusual. And um, I think there's been a lot of broken arms and things like that. And uh, even, I mean, it's been so cold. Even though it hasn't snowed for a week now, this the snow that fell. Is still here, except it's now like rock solid ice. So that all the streets are kind of lined with these meter wide chunks of ice, which makes it completely impossible to park up against the curb, which means people park just kind of next to these big ice blocks. And that narrows the roads down and means uh, <laughs> quite hair raising moments when you're traveling on the bus. <laughs> well, these are really, like really unforeseen kind of practical implications, I suppose. Yeah, well, I mean, they have they have good um, they they clear the roads really well, but as as I mentioned with these ice blocks, but they clear the road, but it just they don't you know they don't get rid of the snow, they just push it to the side, and so when it doesn't snow but it freezes, all the snow just turns to this rock solid ice, and yeah. you can't you can't do anything about it until it melts. So yeah, I mean, um, but one of the the things that really annoys me about this kind of you know having unusually cold weather is that people use it as an argument that global warming isn't happening. Yeah, and the, the climate yeah. isn't changing, and you know, I mean, come on, a cold month or a cold year—that doesn't mean the globe isn't warming. There's such a wealth of evidence: melting polar caps, diminished permafrost, uh, vast amounts of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Um, it's just ignorant statements. It's just—it's. But on the other hand, it's just as annoying when you get Tuvalu's prime minister at the COP15 climate change conference showing the media a video of a big king tide in. Um, and some flooding on his island, and then presenting that as evidence that global warming is happening. I mean, you just it's just annoying. Yeah, you know, I yeah. just want to science. <laughs> I mean, I, I suppose it's because of the name global warming, I suppose. I mean, it was it was a name that sort of, I know, came out of the, the 70s or 80s or something like that. And, and, and climate change should really be the, the name that everyone adopts now because it doesn't necessarily mean warming as such. Um, you, you know, it's, it's about weather extremes, really, isn't it? But the problem about saying climate change is then you don't, you don't get that idea that it's anthropogenic. It's not. You don't get the idea that it's actually man-made. I mean, the climate's always changing, but at the moment, it's actually warming, and it has been warming for a long time, and it's a problem. So, right. I, I set a challenge to you now. Come up with a new name. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, hmm. World heat. <laughs> World heat. <laughs> no, you've still got. You've still got a um, a warming name in there. Well, let's move on. Yeah. Let's move on to um, another big story: free heroin for all. In Denmark. Woohoo! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> no, um, uh, doctor administered heroin is being introduced in Copenhagen and uh, also Denmark's third largest city, Odense, which is the birthplace of Hans Christian Andersen. Um, so they've got programs rolling out next week. 
Um, this is something that's been discussed for the last 15 years, and finally it's actually going to happen. <clears throat> Initially, about it's only about 250 addicts that are going to be part of this uh, free heroin program, which is going to cost the state about $20 million New Zealand a year. Uh, and there's conditions that they, they ha you have to, if, to be part of the program, you have to meet up twice a day. <clears throat> you have to be, have been an addict for a number of years, and you have to have failed the methadone program. And that actually counts out a lot of people. Um, you'd be surprised, but a lot of junkies don't want to turn up twice a day to get their heroin. <clears throat> and a lot, of, uh, a lot of addicts haven't been on the methadone program. So there's a lot of people that aren't missing out. There seems to be a few holes and problems with it. <clears throat> and, of course, there's an opposition to it as well because it's, you know, heroin yeah um but it's it seems like a good idea to prevent crime and prostitution and, and things like that but yeah it's very interesting that it's happening and i think it follows the the dutch model interesting and what finally what is the other big story of the day over there well actually this is this is a really big uh, story in, in denmark and especially in copenhagen um this last week um a school decided to hold a mother's only parent teacher meeting um the school principal has explained that he wants to to meet this group of parents who usually don't attend the parent teacher meetings now these parents are immigrant mothers which is why the issue is so hot because we love to debate immigration here in denmark uh, of course the ultra nationalistic danish people's party which i've meant to mention many times in the letter uh, they've demanded the school principal could be sacked. Um, and interestingly, the, the Socialist People's Party, which is quite a, uh, has quite a soft stance on these sort of values issues, um, is also outraged. Um, and the, I mean, the reason that this has been so keenly debated in the media and the public is that gender segregation is not really something that we do in Denmark. It's very, very undanish. I, I mean, when I went to school as a kid here in Denmark, we showered with the girls until we were about eight years old. Mm. There, there are no single-sex schools. You have unisex toilets in the workplace. That's the norm. Uh, but I guess Danish society is changing. It's becoming more multicultural, and there's a lot of families and people that aren't comfortable with all this unisexuality. And, um, you know, I guess the, the, the school is is solving a problem of not being able to it doesn't the school principal wants to meet these mothers and he, he doesn't uh, have it has not have doesn't have a communication or dialogue with them and this is one way to solve it but yeah there's a, it's a big big issue in denmark at the moment wow well thanks very much for um for highlighting those for us and uh keeping us informed of what's going on in that part of the world daniel nielsen thanks very much thank you and uh, you can find uh, daniel on twitter actually twitter.com forward slash daniel nielsen